Hello, welcome back. And today I'm going to be telling you guys some recs for people who want to get into reading Shakespeare. Um, whether it's for school, whether it's to say, oh yeah, I read Shakespeare, or whether it's you're trying to read more historical kind of stuff. Um, so I've got three plays as recommendations and I thought I'd tell you about them. Um, Shakespeare can be really difficult to read. Um, I've been reading him since 2019 and even then for me it's still some of the language is so topsy-turvy and just a bit all over the place. So I thought it'd be helpful to talk about a few plays that are a lot easier to read and that are also really engaging because let's be honest not all classics are fantastic and not all Shakespeare's plays are interesting though quite a few of them are. So I thought I'd help you guys out. But before we start I'm just gonna say I am a huge Shakespeare fan. I love him. I love his not the person. I love his works. Um, they're brilliant and it's so good when you get right into them because you find out they're not boring. They're very actually interesting. So yes. So my first recommendation is a classic. I'm sure you've heard of most of these but the first one is Midsummer Night's Dream. I love this play so much. It was one of the first ones I read and it's such a vibe. It's really like if you're into like fairy core, kind of like mystical, even like Greek mythology, it is so for you. Um, it's really funny and comedic. And unlike some of Shakespeare's other comedies, the jokes are really easy to like get, even if the language is a bit different. Because I find in some of the others, once you like kind of translate it in your head, you're like, oh, that's funny. But um, sometimes like it takes you a while but with this it's so easy to understand what they're saying and it's just it's a vibe like love it and like I said before the language that he uses is a lot more similar to like more not modern classics but it's just a lot simpler and less uh, kind of structured um it has a love story at its heart that is actually just really sweet and interesting and the actual characters part of it are both interesting in their own kind of way. It's a bit of a forbidden love story but they add a bit of spice with some really funny kind of magic mix-ups. But also, unlike some of the other Shakespeare plays that switch between different little side quests, the side quests in this play in particular are all really interesting because I know, like, I've seen things on TikTok where it's like memes like, oh, when that one character's POV comes up. But with this play, it's nothing like that. They're just like, oh my gosh, the fairy queen, guys. The fairy queen. Yeah, we love her. Um, but even then, just the characters in this play in particular are all really engaging and there is, there's like a few set characters that really bring the comedy, but most of them are kind of all interesting in their own respect and they all bring the comedy to this play in their own little ways. Um, you'll love the main characters. They're awesome. They're really sweet and I just, they're my heart. Um. And my favourite character in this play is Puck. He's a chaotic little shit. Like, you guys, when you read it, you'll love him. He is so mischievous and just... Oh, I can't even. I just... And I'd finish this off with my favourite quote from Midsummer Night's Dream is, Of course, true love never did run smooth. So, that's Midsummer Night's Dream. Go read it. It's so good love it. Anyway, next is a rec that's, oh, you're probably going to be like, oh, not this again. Some of you have probably read it for school or just seen The Lion King and things like that. But Hamlet, Hamlet is my favorite play of all time. No contest. Love it, love it, love it. And also about The Lion King thing, I just remembered that's not based after Hamlet. Sorry about that. Sorry, it's been a long day. But yeah, you guys know Hamlet. It's honestly not overrated whatsoever. 
I know you hear about it all the time. There's all those memes like to be or not to be. It's so good. I love it. Um, it's really, it's perfect for fans of like fantasy books like Throne of Glass, Court of Thorns and Roses, Lord of the Rings. It's just, it carries this vibrant and in-depth mystery at its heart. And it's got a tale of delicious revenge. And it's not one of those ones where it's like, we defeated it with the power of friendship. No. No. They defeat it with the power of pettiness, which, you know, I love. And honestly, like, one of my favorite, like, f- friendships, you can't tell me otherwise, is Hamlet and Horatio. They're literally so cute. Like, I'm sorry. In my head, they're a couple. That's just how it is. To me, they're like an Achilles and Patroclus kind of parallel. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> the actual dramatics of the character of Hamlet, in contrast to all of the bland kind of antagonists, really like creates a character that you just can't help but root for, even if his vengeance and it's kind of like procrastinated. You just really love the main character Hamlet, which in some Shakespeare plays, the main character doesn't do it for you. They're just kind of there to bring the plot along. But with Hamlet, he's just so such a teenager. Because in the play, he's meant to be, like, young. Not like those ones where they've fucking cast a 40-year-old. No. He's meant to be young. Excuse me. Anyway, he's honestly just so good. Like, you can't help but, like, feel for him and laugh at him and laugh with him. It's just, it's fabulous. I'd have to say my favourite character in that whole play is Horatio. He's a loyal sweetheart who deserves the world change my mind like him and ham they should have gotten married i know i love ophelia but so yeah if you're looking for like a really cute friendship with a bunch of murder sprinkled in read hamlet it's great um my favorite quote from hamlet has to be doubt thou stars of fire doubt that the sun doth move doubt truth to be a liar but never doubt. I love. I love that quote. It's so good. And also, I love Hamlet so much that my, <laughs> my actual award-winning book, on all reason, is based off, like, inspired by Hamlet. Go read that. It's basically, like, a epic fantasy, chaotic version. With a twist at the end, but I'll link that below, so go check that out. It actually won the Wattpad Dark Fantasy Award. The, they have, like, an annual dark fantasy competition called uh, The Chosen Darkling. And I was The Chosen Darkling this year! Can you believe? I know, your girl! Um, so, yeah, go go check it out. I need more, I need more reads. Anyway, <laughs> um, and the last play I'm going to be talking about is kind of one... Some of you guys have probably heard of it. Some of you might not. It's not as well known, but I love it all the same. And that is King Henry the Fourth. I love this play for one reason: the characters. Oh, the characters—they're so rich and so chaotic, and I don't know—they're just different from others. Where they're not really there to drive the plot. The plot's kind of just there, and you're just. You just want to read it for the characters, basically. Like, uh, basically the story kind of follows this party boy prince who disdains his inheritance. Okay, the English throne. Like, he's like, yeah, I don't want that. I just want to drink and gamble and be a bandit. Yes, at one point in the story, he does actually do highway robbery. So, yeah. Aside from Lady Macbeth... Henry or Hal, as his friends call him in the book, uh, play, sorry. Um, he's honestly one of the best morally grey Shakespearean characters. One of the best. Aside from Lady Macbeth, who love her. I'm sorry. I'm one of those girls. I love her. She's great. Um, but yeah, he's, he's just so, oh, love him. I really, really recommend this play for people who are looking for a story with like an anti-hero, lead or something just a little less serious 
Like, um, it's hard to explain, but he brings the fact that it's more focused on the characters. I find, in my opinion, it's more focused on the characters. You really get to just enjoy the ride a lot more and there's less like, I guess, concentration as well. But even then, there's like side kind of things going on. And you actually grow to really love those characters as well, even though they were like the opposing kind of kind of characters in it. Um, it gives you like lots of insight into multiple different characters that connect over time. And oh, it's great. It's absolutely brilliant, though it does have a lot of characters. So, yeah, it's also really good because it can be read as a singular story. But if you really love the characters and are looking for something a bit more serious and more plot driven kind of story, like Game of Thrones, Throne of Glass kind of style, uh, part two of King Henry is perfect. It's so good. It really brings in that like conflict and fighting and less, you know, ooh, you know, we're stealing stuff, we're drinking. It's more, you know, him kind of taking on a role so go check that out it's good um my favorite character this is like one of the only plays where the main character is like my favorite i love how i love him he's great he's complex he's really likable and witty but he's also flawed and even though he like has moments where you think oh he's like cold and he's just badass but then there are moments that really show his kind of human kind of heart and everything so he's just really I don't know vibrant and my favorite quote from part one is let's be Diana's foresters gentlemen of the shade sorry that was a sound so I had to pause that and I lost my space sorry so my favorite quote is let's be Diana's foresters gentlemen of the shade minions of the moon so good. Um, so yeah, those are three plays I really recommend if you want to start reading Shakespeare or are looking for something maybe a bit different than normal just novels. Um, one thing I would recommend, and no, this is not sponsored, um, but I found when I first started out, what's really helpful is the Spark Notes, um, No Fear Shakespeare. They, you can get them, I think, online and in most libraries and bookshops. And they're basically, they have the original Shakespeare um, text. And then beside it, they have like a modern translation. So you're still reading the story and you can read both parts. But if you get a bit confused or you just want to have, make it have like, have an easier kind of read of like one scene in particular, you can just read the actual, um, modern day translation um i found those really helped and also at the start they have a really comprehensive character sheet i really recommend that for things like king henry just because there's so many characters and sometimes you can forget who's who so it's really useful to have that instead of just the name like you can go back and say oh this is this person and they're doing this so um really recommend that and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week